Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the structure of the leaf, how our plant tissues adapted to maximize photosynthesis, tissues of the leaf, and finally a summary. In the video Introduction to Photosynthesis, I discuss how plants make their own food. In this video, I'll be talking about the structure of the leaf and how this lets a plant carry out photosynthesis. So what are leaves? Leaves are plant organs. In this diagram, a leaf looks fairly simple, but actually they contain lots of different tissues, which I'll be going through in this video. All these different tissues make up organs, and the organs of plants make up organ systems. These organ systems are extremely useful because they carry out tasks so the plant can survive. This includes transporting substances around the plant. Glucose is one of these substances, and it's transported around the plant so plants can respire. Now, most plants need leaves to survive, and this is because leaves are the main site of photosynthesis and they contain several different tissues to help fulfill its job. Some of these tissues include the epidermal tissue and the epidermal tissue includes cells in the upper epidermis as well as cells in the lower epidermis. Plant cells also have spongy mesophyll tissue in their leaves. And this is shown in this layer here. Plant cells also have a xylem and a phloem. And the xylem and phloem shown here make up the vascular bundles of the plant. Another tissue in the leaf is the palisade mesophyll tissue. And the palisade mesophyll tissue is shown as this layer of cells. Leaves also have stomata and guard cells. The stomata and guard cells are present on the underside of the leaf. Now plants want to make as much food as possible. They want to maximise photosynthesis. So how are plant tissues adapted to maximise photosynthesis? We'll be going through the different tissues in this video. Firstly, let's look at the epidermal tissue. So the epidermal tissue covers the surface of the whole plant. As I said before, there's an upper epidermis and a lower epidermis. The epidermal tissues of the plant are covered by something called a waxy cuticle, which is this thing here. And this means that less water is lost through evaporation. The plant also has the upper epidermis and this layer is below the waxy cuticle. This layer is transparent so light can pass through and this is so it can pass through to the next layer of the cells the palisade cells. So the palisade layer is near the top of the leaf. This means it gets the most light. Now this diagram shows a palisade layer and it has lots of little green dots in the cell and these are chloroplasts. These are where photosynthesis takes place. These cells have lots of chloroplasts to maximize photosynthesis. And as I said before, this is where photosynthesis takes place. Now let's talk about some different tissues. Let's talk about the xylem and the phloem. So the xylem and the phloem make up vascular bundles and these provide support for the leaf. So the xylem helps transport water and other nutrients and these go from the roots to the leaves of the plant. So in this diagram you can see that water is moving up the leaf and this is through a hollow tube which makes up the xylem. Now this water is really important for the leaf as it uses it to photosynthesize. The phloem is another important part of the vascular bundle and this is because it helps transport the glucose made during photosynthesis away from the leaves. In this diagram you can see there's actually a two-way flow of the dissolved sugars so sugars can pass either away or to the leaf. These sugars are used by the cells of the plant to respire. We talk a little more about these in the video transporting water and sugar. Now let's look at some more tissues of the leaf. Well, we talked briefly before about the lower epidermis, but the lower epidermis of the leaf actually has holes called stomata. 
Stomata are essential for the plant as they let carbon dioxide and oxygen diffuse in and out of the leaf and they also control water loss. So in this diagram, this stomata is open. This means it allows CO2 in and so it can be used for photosynthesis and it also allows oxygen to diffuse out of the leaf as it's a waste product. Water vapour can also diffuse out of the stomata. In this diagram, the stomata is closed. This stops water vapour from escaping the leaf. This is to stop the plant losing too much water. So what controls this process? Well, the guard cells surround the stomata and they control the opening of the stomata. Now let's talk about the air spaces in the spongy mesophyll layer. In this diagram, the air spaces are shown here. The air spaces are really important. And this is because it increases the diffusion of gases through the leaf. Leaves are also really broad. This increases the surface area exposed to light. This means more light enters the palisade mesophyll cells and this maximizes photosynthesis. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.